Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So I'm with James. James, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Zed. Excellent stuff. You're probably wondering, why are we dressed up? Right? <laughs> Aprons, you know, like, with the forge behind us. Well, it's, uh, today's actually quite a, quite a special day for me. For those of you who've been following my channel know that for a while now, I've been really looking to get into the whole blacksmithing side of things. Um, and kind of fast forward, I have been connected with some blacksmiths around the UK and things just haven't worked out in terms of going to see them to kind of learn, learn the trade, shall we say. Um, well, recently um, we've connected yeah. and um, it turns out James is not far from me, but quite local. And it makes a change, usually, usually I'm used to travelling like two, three hours and going to see people and this time around it was only like 20, 30 minutes you know, up the road. Um, and James, you probably wouldn't have seen before, you know, he hasn't really appeared on my channel before and it's been quite recent that we've connected. Um, but James actually runs his own forge. Um, you've been running for how many years? Uh, I've been running this forge for five years. For five years? Yeah. Um, the business itself has been going for 15 years. Why? Right. Um, and Martin, who took me under his wings, to say, uh, his family, or well, he's part of a five generation right. of blacksmiths. So Spanning how many years? Uh, that goes back a good 100. 200 years. 200 years. So 200 years, you know, the lineage goes with the whole blacksmithing side of things. So to say you know a thing or two, <laughs> blacksmithing as a result. A bit. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but James, James' work is incredible. It really is. You know, we, we've been here all morning, uh, just um, just kind of been talking, get to know each other. It's the first yeah. time we've actually met in person. Um, you also had to do a criminal record check on me. Just to make sure, as a joke, by the way. <laughs> as a joke, by the way, I've got one of those faces, you've got to do a check. But no, we're here, and uh, here's basically where we're at. Um, we've been speaking, and I'll be looking to get into blacksmithing. Now, at the time I'm making this video, in about three months' time, roughly, I'm going to be uh, reorganising a workshop I've got at home, which is at the moment full up with junk, and it's going to be cleared out. And then I'm going to dedicate like a permanent workshop, and a part of that is to, to have a forge where I can work on projects. Now, I have no intention of becoming a blacksmith. All I wanted to do was just learn the principles in a good way, where if I'm at home and I wanted to make a squirrel cooker for myself or a gift for someone or a flint striker, some, sim uh, some very simple kind of objects in principle, uh, then I'm able to do that. Now, obviously I can go away and learn it myself and, and that'll take quite a while, but why waste that time when I can see like an expert like James, you know, and learn all the good habits and learn the good principles that go with it. Now what I'm hoping to do and with James's kind of permission, what he's allowed me to do is to document uh, my time. Now at the moment we're still working it out, but I think maybe once a month or once every few weeks I'll come and see James, spend like half a day, spend a day with him uh, learning. Um, and you were talking about um, doing it in a way where, is it right we're going to build the forge, we're going to start with some fundamentals, we're going to build the tools, is that correct? Yes, yeah. yeah, so what we'll do is we'll go through the basic techniques that you need to start your journey into blacksmithing. Right. And then as we go through, we'll progress in knowledge that you're using, making your own tools and things which should last you a lifetime. Right. Um, and then further down the line, we'll then go into actually building your own forge. Okay. Oh, excellent. So, so it's, it's, it's starting quite, quite, a, quite a, 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 an effective way. That, so we're looking at with the real fundamental techniques in, yeah. well, before we even go in, go ahead and start making anything. Um, and then obviously, look to kind of forge the tools and then forge the actual forge itself. Yeah, yeah make the forge itself. So we've basically got the whole foundation in place. Then once that's in place, uh, then we to go on and then assume to start making items yeah. and, uh, uh, and kind of moving on. So. Um, so what I want to do, I'd like to with James's kind permission, is I want to hopefully video document most of that journey uh, to share with you guys. Now here's where I'm kind of my thoughts are at, is this video series on the blacksmithing. I want it to be a video diary, not necessarily a tutorial, because here's the thing, to, in order for, for me to learn of James and for James to teach is one thing, and then to form every single thing is it's impossible. Yeah, because I'm either doing one thing or the other. I'm either filming the whole time or I'm doing it the whole time. Yeah. So we're just trying to get a middle balance. So here's what my suggestion is to you, that treat this series and, and future videos on blacksmithing as a video diary. Inadvertently, you're going to learn stuff. That, that goes without saying. But here's the thing. James, uh, we've coerced him to get onto the social media side of things. <laughs> and so what he's going to start doing uh, on YouTube um, and obviously it's needless to say I'm going to put a link to his YouTube channel below this video is he's going to start doing very detailed tutorials moving forward okay starting from the absolute beginning yeah. and those will be specific tutorials you know that James is going to be doing teaching you from A to Z so don't worry if you're going to see a lot of things and you know it's not kind of clear uh, James will be covering that so these videos on my channel are more of a video diary uh, you will still learn stuff um, but James will be covering stuff in a hell of a lot more detail okay on his channel 
So there you go, we're gonna make a start today. Um, just one thing I will say is, excuse if the, the kind of video is a little bit choppy in terms of footage, it is difficult. We've got a kind of tight space. We're obviously gonna be covering a lot of stuff. Yeah. And also the lighting is, is purposely low, isn't it? Yeah, to the lighting's low in here for the simple reason that we need to be able to see the heat of the forge, okay. the metal that's coming out of the fire. If we have too much light, we won't be able to see it. Um, I can demonstrate that later on yes. by having it in here. Then I can walk out with a piece of steel into the light, yeah. and you won't see any change in light. the colour. So that's why the lighting is in here is so low. Gotcha. So, so my apologies in advance. If obviously I'm still going to do my best to record good footage, but it is a little bit difficult. You know, we've got some challenges uh, to kind of overcome. Um, but needless to say, without further ado, we're going to get straight into this. Now, one thing I will stress, and this is a disclaimer, is please don't, don't try this at home, you know, unless you really know what you're doing. Yeah, am I right in yes. saying that? You yeah. know, it's, um, uh, you know, James is an expert in what he does. It doesn't mean you, you don't kind of have the desire to kind of follow suit, but be very, very careful when you're doing any of this. You know, we're, we're, we've got safety equipment, you know, we're, yeah. we're taking precautions. I've got my army, army boots on, right, you know. Uh, so you could, it's needless to say, it's an obvious thing, but I do need to stress it, you know, this is a, a video diary. Uh, so please be very, very careful if you're gonna attempt anything at home. Is yeah. there anything you want to add to that in terms of the... Uh, if for some reason you see me without certain safety equipment on, uh, they don't need to comment on it, just don't follow in my footsteps. Although I've been doing this for a long time, I don't want any of you getting hurt by my bad techniques. I will stress that I will try my best not to do it, but every now and then I can have a bit of a lapse. Yeah. Yeah. So basically just be very conscious of you know doing doing anything like this uh, at home because you know it's obviously a very, very fun thing to try. Uh, and it's a very beneficial thing to try, but it's got a very dangerous side as well. You know, work with heat and sharp objects and heavy objects yeah. and stuff, and you, know, you need to be very, very, very careful around that. Um, so the goal is this, is you know, I want you to follow this, this series, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun doing it, I'm really looking forward to this, you know, I'm going to share a lot of information, we're going to kind of progress from this, and also as an end goal is to inspire you, you know, to go out, you know, think about it. I know there's a lot of you, not all of you, but there's a lot of you that have shown some form of interest in blacksmithing in one way or another. So hopefully this series will kind of like you know, inspire you and kind of like give you a bit of insight into what's actually involved. Because there's a lot I don't know, you know, that's gonna be very new to me. Um, so without further ado, um, let's get straight into this. So here we have the forge. So James, what's the first step? We wanna get this lit, yeah? Yeah, first step is to get this lit. So what we're using is a crisp packet. Okay. Um, I've been doing this for six years with crisp packets and only beginning of this year we realised that it can actually be used in the woods as well as part of your bushcrafting. Right. Loads of people go out with crisp packets to have a snack. Brilliant for starting your little campfires. Excellent. So you just fold it up and then just... Yeah, just fold it up. Doesn't take a lot to light them. Now, we're using Smithy's Breeze, which is coke. Um, okay. The problem with coke is it's notoriously hard to light because it's had all the impurities taken out of it. So, so what, people use what, just normal normal, normal coal? A lot of people, you can use normal coal. Um, the problem is that it's got a lot of, the impurities tend to clump together and get sticky. Okay. That can end up disrupting the fire itself, the flow okay. of the fire. Um, this is all part of your fire management. This is something that I'll go into in my later videos yeah. uh, about. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to get this one lit. Okay. We'll just slowly go through how to light it. Okay. Now, because it's hard to light, you need to get sufficient airflow throughout the coke. So what we do is we actually stack it in the formation that they used to use for lighting beacons years ago. So all we do is we just cross it over, slowly building it up. Because there's plenty of air gaps in it, it allows the airflow to circulate evenly. Obviously preparing your wood is another So is there a particular practice. wood that you use or just? Uh, no, any wood will do as long as it's dried out. Okay. Um, wood that you find in the forest uh, could light a forge mm -hmm. as long as it's dry enough. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's starting to go now. So what's the next step then, James? So the next step is to form our little bowl. Um, we'll pull the coke into the bowl around the fire. Okay. That will slowly heat the coke up itself. Uh, and then we'll put a little bit on top and start the forge up. So what's the tool you're using then? Is there uh, a specific name for that? So this is just a scraper. Okay. Um, we use this for all sorts, checking metal while it's in the fire. Right. Rather than pulling the metal right out of the fire, we just scrape the coke back. Right, gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's mainly used just for moving your coke about. Okay. So you're literally just building it like a bowl around the edge of Yeah. So what I'm waiting for is, once I get it lit, we then wait for a heart to form inside with the wood. Okay. And then we'll slowly put it over. So, so we're going to turn this on now, guys. So yeah. the point is if we start shouting, it's going to be quite a loud. Was that you just releasing the valve there then? Yeah, so what we've got is underneath the forge we've got a gate. As I move this back and forth, that right. opens and closes the gate, which uh, variates how much airflow is inside the forge. Right. Too much and um, you end up burning far more coke than you need to. Too little and you won't keep the forge in. Okay guys, so apologies for shouting, once again the forge is blowing in the background. Um, but James, you were talking about working in your hand-eye coordination with the hammer. Yeah, so hand-to-eye coordination isn't just about your hands and your eyes, it's about your feet, your body position. Um, you need to make sure you're comfortable when you're doing any sort of blacksmithing. If you're not comfortable, you make it hard for yourself. So, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle on the anvil. Okay. And our aim is to hit that circle every time. Right. To make life easier for you, put your thumb on the back of your hammer. Okay. That gives you a little bit more control. Okay. Is there specific hammers that you use, by the way, uh, when you're doing the smithing? The hammer that I'm using is a two-pound hammer. Okay. We use all sorts of hammers, as you can see on the back wall. Right. Every hammer has its own job. Okay. But every blacksmith has his favourite hammer. Okay. It's like his best friend. Right. <laughs> so this is my favourite two pound hammer. Gotcha. So the idea is we want to try and hit that spot every single time. Just start off nice and slow. Make sure you're tapping that same point every time. And then just slowly build your way up. When we're doing this, we talk about wrist movement, elbow movement. Right. That's saying I'll go into more detail with the my later videos. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so James, so what we're doing now then? So now we're going to use the most basic technique that most blacksmiths start off with, which is drawing out. Okay. So we're going to reduce the thickness of our steel and slowly bring it down to a very fine taper. Okay. But we're going to keep the same distance, or uh, the same width of the metal. Right. So we're only going to draw down the thickness. Okay. Okay. So the forge is running around about 1800 degrees at the moment. Right. Which is more than enough what we need. Obviously moving your coals about is all part of your fire management. Gotcha. Okay, so is that almost ready then? That is pretty much ready. Right, so, nice. It's only been in for a couple of seconds. So, we'll go over to the bit. All we're going to do is just slowly work the metal down. We're not going to follow the metal with our hammer. We're okay. just going to move the, move the metal and keep the hammer in the same place. Okay. Okay, so. We'll turn it 
over. Because the anvil's cold at the moment, it's drawing the heat out of the metal quickly. Okay. So it's just a case of going back in and going through the process again. So we're talking loud once again, a full blow. So James, what we do, we're making a scroll, right? Yeah. So and we, uh, you were talking about a technique for... We, I was just saying, we can do this an easy way to make scrolls. And that's using a scroll former. Okay. But I'm going to make it awkward for us, because you need to know how to make a scroll in order to make a scroll form. Okay. So what we do is we take it really simply. We draw a cross on the floor. Okay. And all we'll do is we'll mark segments out on that cross. Right. Slowly coming out as we go along. Then what we need to do is we start from the centre and slowly work our way out towards these points. Trying to keep it fairly even. And then what we'll do is we just follow that line We'll use that scroll form on the floor. Right. And then we'll slowly work around that. Okay, so you talk about scraping it off then? The, yeah. The metal. 
So what we've got forming here is scale. Right. It's the same composition as rust. Right. If you don't take it off before you do a scroll or a certain piece of work, it makes it very difficult to clean it up afterwards. So what we'll do is we'll put this back in the fire and get it hot again. Okay. Then I'll use an old scraper and take off the scale. And then we'll start forming the scroll. You're judging the amount of time you leave it in there, don't you? Yeah, I'll judge it from how hot I've got my forge going. Right. That's using the shutter on the door. Okay. Um, and that there is. It takes a little bit of getting used to judging the uh, judging your time, so. Off. This is the only time you want to choke your hammer. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to brush it down. Being very careful with it. And once we get so far, we'll take it back up on itself and start knocking it towards us. Too cold now. So it's back in the fire again. So guys, here's where I'm at so far. You can see that. That's where we've got to now. So you can see the scroll. So what we're gonna do is just slowly bring this round. See, if it looks off at the moment, it's not too much of a problem. Is this a specific name for the clamp that you're using? So, it's just called a pair of 
uh, forks. Okay. So you have your hardy tool forks and your handset forks. Right. If you need to do very careful adjustments, just use your hand forks and just tweak it slightly in the right place. So it just gives you a bit more control. Ah, gotcha. Oh, okay. Interesting. So it's gone a little bit sideways there. Okay, so the one James is holding is the one I'm working on. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've got I've kind of I'm just trying to get used to getting the, the angle of the, the curve. And uh, do you want to point out where I kind of well I didn't do it properly, James? Well, we sort of ended up with a big straight here. So right. what we've done is we've had to slowly rework it to get it back to where we need it. Okay. Um, you can't guarantee you're going to get it right the first time every time, but as you can see, we're slowly starting to come back to where we need to be. Gotcha. I just need to pull. There's a little bit of a turn in this that needs to come out slightly, which is right about there. So I'll use these for control. There we are. There we are. Now we're slowly starting to come back again. So basically, the premise here is we're just manipulating that bend then, bit yeah. by bit. Right. Yeah, if you go, lovely thing about metal is if you go too far, just heat up and go back again. Okay. Can we do that in real life as well? <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs>
realise we can so much simpler. And it means it does kick off a little bit. straightening up my one, so James. Right, so we're going to use the hardy hole this time. Okay. Um, so all we're going to do is we're just going to put that centre over the hardy hole. Okay. Just give it a couple of taps. So I went a little bit too far with that one. Just go back one. coming back. It's looking a lot better. This bit isn't anywhere near as easy as what I've got in the full once you start turning, it starts going to work with us. And scout tends to pick off.
So there you go guys, proof that I've been working. You've got dirty hands. I've got dirty hands, I've got, I've got blacksmith hands, look at that grime. It's the first time I'm having to see grime on my hands. Look at that. <laughs> All right, guys, so here's my finished piece. So basically what I was doing is trying to replicate what James has done here. And this is my one here. Now, full, full disclosure here, I actually bodged it up. For our non-British friends, that's like mess it up, right? <laughs> so when that was in the vice, just over here, just behind here, um, when I was turning it, can James, explain to you, what, what was it I did wrong? I actually, I didn't wedge it in properly into the vice, did I? No, the the vi you didn't tighten the vice up enough, so right. when you started twisting, um, it twisted further up the metal than where we expected it to go. Right, gotcha. Um, then it started to move in all directions except for the direction we wanted, wanted it to go. go. <laughs> it's a taking a life form of so, its own. Yeah, so it was just a case of um, very carefully bringing it all back, but it takes a little bit more knowledge to do something like that. Yeah. A lot of people would look at him, throw it away and say, you know, I've, I've naffed that. But um, I was determined to make sure we hadn't lost yours. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. No, so basically, James so. rescued it. You know, that, that twist, I, I totally miscalculated that. So, but it's all part of the learning curve. But I'll tell you one thing though, is I've uh, got an appreciation for all the elements involved, you know? So hats <laughs> off to you guys, you know, for making it look so easy. Yeah, da <laughs> damn you YouTubers, man. It's like, I watch your videos, I think, wow, that looks, that looks quite easy. You get down to it, and wow, it's... Um... Yeah, um, a lot of people say, oh, it's just a twist. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more involved than just a twist, I'm yeah. afraid. Yeah, no, no, there, there was a hell of a lot more. But thank you for that, James. You're very welcome, Zed. So there we go, guys, that's it, that's a wrap of day one. James, thank you so much for your tuition. Well, and zero pence. This was the second commentary. You probably think it's a ventriloquist on that. <laughs> ben, so zero pence, another YouTuber, very knowledgeable in the knife making space, and engineering space, and all around. So, uh, no, I've done some great work, both of these guys. And like I said, both of these guys have just kind of really guided me through. Um, so day one, day one complete, I survived. Yeah. I haven't been burnt, I haven't burnt your uh, force down. <laughs> <laughs> That's even started it. You got wee fingers. <laughs> I've got my fingers intact, bit grimy, but they're all intact. So no, thank you for that. It was an appreciation. Like I said, day one's obviously the orientation day, I assume, isn't it? Yeah. Just get my head right. It's the first time I've ever done any of this stuff. So it's good to, you know, first time using all the tools and the heat and everything. And I've got an appreciation, if anything. And that is, there's a lot to it. Each one carries its own little nuances, you know, the subtleties uh, and stuff. So what we got in store for the next session, Jerry? Uh, okay. For the next session, we're actually going to start making your own set of tongs. Okay. So that will be your next step to blacksmithing. Right. Um, the tongs that I designed, they'll last you a lifetime, and they'll more likely become your favourite pair. Right. They'll be the pair that you put down and go, wherever I put them. Yeah, protect them over my tongs. Stuff. Now I look forward to it. Like I said guys, so moving forward what we're going to do, I'm going to obviously video document with you know, these guys' permission to kind of like further my journey into blacksmithing. Uh, so we'll move on to the tools and the forge. Yeah. Um, and then once I get onto that, then obviously you know, start you know, working on little projects, you know, moving forward. And I'll video document that. Moving forward also James is going to start doing um, video, detailed video tutorials uh, on his channel. And, uh, James and uh, Zero Pence are doing a lot of collaborations in terms of knife making. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put three links below. So one is going to be to Zero Pence's channel, so you can check that out for the knives that they're making in terms of collaboration. And I'm also going to put a link to uh, James's Bushcraft Blacksmith uh, YouTube channel, also his website. One of the YouTube channels where he's going to be putting in his videos, uh, all the detailed tutorials. So he's going to start stepping that up. And from there you can connect with him elsewhere on social media. Uh, but I'm also going to put a link to his website, and on the website you can find out about you know, the commissions that he does, the work that he does, and also you do teaching as well, don't you? Yes. So you actually teach people. So I do teach people the blacksmithing side and part of the knife making side as well. Yeah. So these guys collectively are you know, teaching the, uh, the blacksmithing and the knife making. So these guys are basically in the Essex region, so for those in the UK, it's in the South East, you know, kind of like London, just outside London. Uh, but for those of you outside the UK or else parts of the, in the United Kingdom that is too far to travel to, there's not to worry, you know, there will be stuff on uh, the YouTube channel. So it's kind of catering for everyone. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. But it's good to study stuff online, I've found that. But you also ideally need that hands-on you know, help. You know, there's a lot of stuff you can't learn 
through videos that you can only learn by being in front of someone. Some of this stuff I would have completely messed up if I followed videos. It would be a complete disaster. It would have been on hand to kind of clean it up. Uh, but like I said, you know, I hope you enjoyed part one. This is like the beginning of kind of moving forward a whole series. So hopefully you're yeah, moving forward all being well under the tuition of these two gentlemen. Uh, I'll be you know, looking to kind of further on to more projects. Like I said, I will be putting links to their uh, social media uh, channels below. Please go and connect with them. Do some really, really amazing work. In fact, there's a lot of work that I've not even shown that I've seen it. I'm like, wow, look at that, look at that, look at that. It's like, they do some great work. So I hope one day you have inspired to even get anywhere near you know, that kind of level. Um, but even which way I've enjoyed myself. Once again, thank you guys. Um, uh, it's been a real pleasure. And I hope you enjoyed this video. One last thing, I've taken a load of photos from this uh, uh, day out with these guys and I've posted that to my fan page. So if you have a check uh, on the link just below this video, uh, with the car hauling outside, uh, with the link below this video, uh, you can go check out the photos there of my time with these guys. So, as always, James, I want to thank you. Zero pence, thank, thank you. you so much. And as always, guys, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Ed from Z Outdoors. Peace out. Right.